Good morning, I'm Anna Stake. Today, I want to talk to you about how to attach records. Let me share my screen with you. Here we are. I've signed into Family Search. You'll see on the right column is uh, it says a re recommended tasks. I have records clicked, so I'm asking for what records are there records that I can attach to people. And the first one is Maria Elizabeth Thwaites. I could click view my relationship or just go straight into the record. We'll just click on her name. That will take me to a little information box. I'll click on her name again to get into the detail page of her record. This is where you do the bulk of your work in Family Search is on the detail page and you can see that details is highlighted. Over here on the left are research helps, a possible duplicate, and also this find a grave index. So I'm going to look at attaching the find a grave index. I do have to deal with the possible duplicate, which is what we'll do next week. So uh, I want to know if this record is actually hers. Well, I have to familiarize myself with who Marie Elizabeth Thwaites is. And you can see here in the toolbar that there's 34 sources. That's quite a few sources. I'm going to click on that and look at the list of sources. They're generally, when the source comes from Family Search, it would be listed in chronological order. If it's brought in from an outside source, then you can change uh, the information so that it's listed in chronological order again. If people don't do that, then they'll be listed at the bottom. So I'm looking for a death record for her. I know that she died in 1857, at least according to this, the family search record. So I'll just scroll down till I get to 57 and the last record for her is in 51. So there isn't a death record attached to her already. So that's good. Maybe this is her death record. Go back to the detail page, come back over here for my find a grave. Before I do that, let me finish familiarizing myself. So under vitals, I can see her name. She's a female. She was born on the 5th of January in 1792 in London, England, and she died on the 23rd of January, 1857. Scrolling down for other information, a whole bunch of alternate names, which I could spend some time in here and clean those up and delete the duplicates of alternate names. Shows that she lived in uh, Lambeth, Surrey, England in 1841 and same place in 1851. I show that she's married to Joseph Greening and she has 14 children. Maria, Rebecca, John, James, Esther, George, Emma, Henry, Charles, Edward, Marianne, who is my ancestor, who actually was in the Martin Lilly Handcart Company, Susanna, Matilda, and Amelia. Okay, so I know there's a whole bunch of kids and their husband's Joseph Greening. So I, I have a little bit of an idea about her life. So we'll go back up here to the possible, um, to the research help and click on the find a grave index. The first thing that comes up is the index information. I can use the toolbar and scroll through it to see that um, Mary Elizabeth Thwaites Greening, well that matches because her name's Mary Elizabeth Thwaites and she married a Greening. This is a burial, she was buried in London, that matches, we know that she lived in London, St. Matthew's Churchyard, I can't remember if that was listed or not, but uh, now that I've read the index information, I want to go to the actual record. So to find the image of the actual record, I'll have to go outside of Family Search to find a grave. I'll click on that. Here is the find a grave record. You can see that uh, she was born in 1791 died in 1857, buried at St. Matthew's Churchyard in Brixton, London. Well, from this information, it looks like it's her, but I don't know for sure. But then when I come down and see any biographical information that might be posted, look, her husband is Joseph Greening, and here's a whole bunch of children. I expect there to be 14. One, two, three, four, my ancestor, Marianne Greening. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There might be fifteen. There might be an extra one in there. But I know that this is the right family. 
I recognize these names and especially my relatives. So I feel confident this is her grave and I can attach it. But I can't do it from this website. I just came out to look at, find a grave to see uh, if I could verify that it really was her or not. And I feel confident it is. So I'll go back to family search. And now I'm going to review and attach the record. When you attach a record, the record information will always be in the left column and the rec and the information from family search will always be on the right and it lines them up side by side to give you an opportunity to compare them to see if this is who you think it is so maria elizabeth waits greening i have maria elizabeth waits uh, her birth 1791 well the 5th of january 1792 close enough Death, 1857, buried in London. So I'm going to add that. When you have the opportunity to add, do so. That means you don't have to type it in. It will be automatically added. And then I can give a reason why I think this record is her. And so my reason was the people that were attached to her record and also to her family search. So I'm going to say same husband and children and then I can click attach so this is a toggle switch it's either attach or detach and it's attached so I'm finished all I have to do is come down here and click return to family tree and then if I wanted to go back to the opening page to see the next person on the list that has a record attached to it all i have to do is click on family search right here this family search icon click on that and that brings me back to the opening page and i can see who the next person is that has a, a record that i could uh, potentially attach and that will show up here we go in the recommended test you can see that marianne or maria is gone and the next person has come up on the list so Hope that helps you. I hope you spend some time attaching some records to Family Search and have a great week, and we'll see you next week.